And I'm dreaming Yeah, I know I'm gonna dream Gonna dream about the time when I'm with you Welcome again, everyone. Please be seated. You ready for this? Yes. Yes. Let's get you married, guys. <laughs> so I must share a funny story that happened recently. So <laughs> I remember when I first met Adam, how taken aback I was. You know, here's this tall, handsome, charming guy, right? <laughs> Ladies, right? <laughs> Gentlemen, it's okay. Come on. You can agree too. Anyways, when my mom recently met Adam, my mom, being a very reserved, very shy lady, didn't think anything of it, right? Anyways, I was actually really excited for her to meet Adam because she could put a picture to the face of who I was marrying today. Didn't think anything of it, but with my mom, she managed to, you know, keep her composure, <laughs> shake Adam's hand, and with her broken English said, hello. I didn't think anything of it. We said our goodbyes until we got to the car. She says to me, Israel, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. My very reserved mother totally developed a crush on Adam in a matter of minutes. She says, Israel, why didn't you warn me? He looks like William Levy. He's just as handsome. I said, mother. Compose yourself. <laughs> By the way, who here knows who William Levy is? One, One person. Well, I brought a picture. Megan, what do you think? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's okay. So I said, Mother, please. So in her silent voice, she says, good for her, exclaiming, Adam had landed a good one. I said, sorry, Megan had landed a good one. I said, Mother... You know, I think it's actually Adam who's landed a good one. Because quite frankly, I think he landed her a good one. I said, picture yourself a Portuguese version of Pocahontas. <laughs> <laughs> With the tenacity and spunk of a Salma Hayek. I said, yes, that's her. And I said, I think she's the good looking one. So I hand over my phone to show her a picture of Megan on Instagram. She grabs the phone and says, Oh, see. Oh, yes. They're both very good looking. Tell them both that I said that they must have five kids. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, guys, I'm only the, the message deliverer. Mrs. Serna has left you with some homework. Patty, Laura, I'm sure you agree with that homework, right? Yeah. Actually, let's give it up for the moms here today. We love our moms. So with that in mind, let's make this marriage official, guys. Today, there will be no dearly beloved, no betrothed, and no ancient rhyme of the married. Today, there are no dead languages to solemnize vows that are very much alive and will remain so for a lifetime. Today, promises become permanent and friends become family. This day is not about the words spoken or the rings exchanged, nor is it about, nor is it about grand pronouncements and recessional marches. On this day, the day of Megan and Adam, it's about love. Today is also a celebration for the rest of us to see love in bloom and to, to participate in the union of two people so delightfully suited to one another. 
and to have a couple cocktails in the process, of course. <laughs> Megan and Adam, the journey you both started in July 2012 has brought you to this point. The narrative of the rest of your story is about to unfold. So, what does it entail? Well, all you have to do is simply love one another and let that love show through in everything you do for one another. Adam, like, continuing to surprise Megan with romantic dinners in LA. Megan, perfecting that chocolate chip cookie that Adam loves so much. <laughs> you see, love isn't just a word, it's an action. Love isn't something you say, it's something you do. Love is being genuine, honest and open, compassionate and kind, passionate and blind, and remembering that love does in no space or time. Because there are many different kinds of love, almost, if not all, which are present here today. There is romantic love, the love of parents and grandparents, of children, brothers and sisters, and the love amongst friends. Not only do Megan and Adam love one another romantically, they do. You can see it in every look, every touch, and every Instagram post together. <laughs> they also love each other as friends. In fact, this is how Megan described Adam. Adam, the person who fit my notes I once took on my iPhone years ago to describe the ideal man. A friendly person who goes out of the way for people. I think we've all seen it. But also, someone that I could be brutally honest with on, on, about other people, things, and experiences behind closed doors without judgment. There was another word for that, but I'm not going to use it. <laughs> And Adam, you said these words to describe Megan. She's, re she's reliable and fun to be around. Sweet and spicy, but not cheesy. That was important. <laughs> but see guys, that love, that love and enjoyment of each other as friends is what will sustain you through this marriage. In addition, the love collectively in this space from friends and family will help sustain and support the promises you make today. All of us here, will help solidify this bond as these two individuals are joined as husband and wife. Megan and Adam, this journey will be at times richly rewarding and difficult, but most importantly, it will be a journey you take together. Marriage is much more than the contract you're about to sign. You are promising in front of all these people here today <laughs> that you wanna be with each other and only each other and that you will do everything in your power to honor the promises you make here today. So guys, I'll be done with the machine after this, I promise. I stand before you on one of the most important days of your life and feeling honored that I'm able to be a part of it. As you continue your journey together, I offer you these simple words of advice. Let your love be stronger than your anger. Remember, the little things are the big things. Learn the wisdom to compromise. It is far better to bend than to break. Confide in each other and ask for help when you need it. Always be friends. Never take each other for granted. Remember to say I love you every day. And finally, as one of my favorite authors, Gabriel Garcia Marquez once wrote, remember, there is always something left to love. So, Megan and Adam, before you declare vows to one another, I need to take, of some, take care of some legal mandates here required by the state. I want to hear you confirm that it is indeed your intention to be married today. Megan Kathleen Walker, do you come here freely and without reservation to give yourself to Adam Paul Bravender in marriage? If so, answer I do. I do. Adam Paul Bravender. Do you come here freely and without reservation to give yourself to Megan Kathleen Walker in marriage? If so, answer I do. I do. Megan and Adam, please come together. <laughs> Megan, are you ready to present your vows to Adam? I am. <laughs> First off, baby. <laughs> I vow to clean out the mocha pot and be the one to make coffee in the morning more than once a month. <laughs> 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 I
I vow to support, encourage, and believe in you and all of your endeavors, even the crazy ones where we buy a plot of land for a horse boarding facility or move to Greece and live off feta cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I vow to always make time for you, especially when the month of November rolls around. <laughs> I vow to let you take care of me and not let my stubborn, I can do it myself attitude get in the way. Most importantly, I vow to love you through it all until my last breath. <laughs> well, those were really good. <laughs> She said five, so. Um, <laughs> so, <clears throat> Megan, I vow to always put you before myself in everything I do. Before when I go to the grocery store and think about buying Reese's Pieces for myself, I'll make sure to buy you a cream soda. <laughs> I vow to love you even when you're hangry and you haven't had breakfast. I vow to always make and take care of you. I vow to grow old with you and experience life with you, to travel to Paris, to Italy, to Mexico, and beyond. I vow to love you even, <clears throat> even when arguing over directions, which we will. <laughs> and finally, I vow to be the husband that you need, the best friend that you need, and the man that you deserve. I love you. That's beautiful. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. At this moment, I would like to invite Mr. Paul Bravender, the father of the groom, to read a special passage from the Bible that the couple have selected in honor of their faith. In a marriage relationship, both husband and wife are called to submit. For the wife, this means willingly following her husband's leadership in Christ. For the husband, it means putting aside his own This means submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For husbands, this means love your wives just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. He did this to present her to himself as a glorious church, without a spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as they love their own bodies. For a man who loves his wife actually shows love for himself. No one hates his body but feeds and cares for it, just as Christ cares for the church. And we are members of his body. As the scripture says, a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united in one. This is a great mystery, but it is an illustration of the way Christ and the church are one. So again I say, each man must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. You must be a proud father today. At this moment, I would like to invite the best man up to bring the wedding bands. And we'll be careful not to lose them. <laughs> Your wedding rings are the outward and visible sign of the inward and invisible bond which already, already unites your two hearts in love. To give each other a ring signifies the union of the hearts and infinite love. Megan. Megan, place the ring on Adam's finger and repeat after me. I, Megan, take you, Adam, to be my husband. I, Megan, take you, Adam, to be my husband. I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad. I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. I will love and honor you all the days of my life. I will love and honor you all the days of my life. <laughs> Down there? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Adam. <laughs> Place this ringer on Megan's ring and repeat after me. I, Adam, uh, take you, Megan, to be my wife. I, Adam, take you, Megan, to be my wife. I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad. I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad. 
in sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. I will love and honor you all the days of my life. I will love and honor you all the days of my life. <laughs> Megan and Adam, by the power vested in me by the state of California, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Adam, you're free to kiss your bride. <laughs> <laughs> Family and friends, I would like to introduce for the first time Mr. and Mrs. Bravender. Yeah. <laughs>